Hello everyone. In this session, we'll be starting with a new topic called circles, which is of course part of coordinate geometry. And circle you have learned in geometry in your 10th standard or maybe before also. Now, what treatment we give here to all those curves what you have learned in geometry before and now, that is altogether different. Now there, we had only mostly theorems and all. And here in coordinate geometry, it is more of equations. Now, when I started my sessions of coordinate geometry, there we started with point, then line. I mean, that description we tried to write in terms of X and Y. And there I had mentioned one word, locus. Locus was actually path generated by a moving point under certain condition. That was locus. And then we tried to find out equation of locus. And I'm sure all those who have seen the previous videos of basic coordinate geometry and straight lines, by now they must have understood that here onwards we will be studying more and more various types of loci. Loci means plural of locus. Now, the very next candidate in the list, what we study is circles. So here in this session, we will be studying now equations of circle. Circle means again a locus only. So like this in next sessions also, we will be studying more and more different loci. So let us start with forms of equations of circles. We will be having different forms. So this session would be mainly of equations of a circle in various forms. So how do we start? First, we will have to draw x-axis, y-axis, then perhaps a circle. Circle means what? It's a moving point. How does it move? So that its distance from a fixed point is constant. So my fixed point in this picture is origin. And P, what I have written inside bracket with x, comma y, is the moving point. It moves in such a way so that its distance from the origin is R throughout. So we will be getting a circle. Just recall what you have done in geometry. Your compass, that needle was nothing but a fixed point and the pencil or tip of the pencil, I should say, that was a moving point. So equation would be generated like this. I have actually shown the movement also, correct? Now, the thing is, we have to describe this now in X and Y. So how do we describe? And that would give you actually the equation. And equation would be now, you have to use distance formula only. So distance OP equal to R. This you have to write now in X and Y terms and that would lead to actually by distance formula you would have written under root x minus 0 whole square plus y minus 0 whole square equal to r. You can square on two sides to get x square plus y square equal to r square. So this would be the form. This is one of the standard forms rather I should say the simplest form of equation of circle with center at the origin and radius r. Now let us take one example to understand how do we actually write equation. Of course origin would be the center. And radius should be known to me. Now, so if I have to write equation of a circle with radius 4, equation would be x square plus y square equal to 4 square. Means x square plus y square equal to 16. Right? Let us move further from here and try to now, you know, like make situation little difficult for ourselves. Okay? So, next equation has to be of the form radius and center given. When I say radius and center given, I am expecting now center to be different from the origin. So my center could be in this case, suppose h comma k, that is the center and p is still like before moving point and distance cp, I have to kept r and that's a constant. So of course, again, here also we will be using distance formula and that would be under root x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square equal to r and then on squaring, I get x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square equal to r square. Now, how is it different from the previous form? If you wish, you can remember this only. And substitute h and k 0, 0 to get the previous form. So actually, the previous form was nothing but actually application of this. Right? But most of the time, when we start with our lecture, we try to give to students the simplest thing. So we started with x square plus y square equal to r square. Or you can use this also to get the previous form. So let us take now an example on this. Of course, again, here also I'm expecting center and radius to be known to me. So if suppose center is 1 comma 3 and radius is 5, then how do I write equation of the circle? So obviously it would be x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 3 whole square equal to 5 square. So 5 square means 25. So that would be your final answer. If you wish, you can simplify it further, right? Now I'm leaving right now in the same form. Let us go for important notes. Like whatever we have learnt in these two forms or whatever we have observed. Now, 
the whole thing is about r right center we know like when center is changed what we are observing that we have already seen now what about r if r square is greater than 0 then there is a possibility that you are going to get a circle right so x square plus y square equal to r square would be a real circle right and if r square is less than 0 then what we will have x square plus y square equal to r square will not be satisfied by any real points. So, no real circle will be there. So, we will say, if I am writing in set form, no points in that set. Means, set would be empty, which will satisfy the condition x square plus y square equal to r square. For example, r square is say minus 2. Then what will happen? x square plus y square equal to minus 2. Can we have any such circle? So, set would be empty. No points in the real plane will satisfy this condition. And what about if r square is equal to 0? then there is no distance from the origin. Such a circle is called a point circle. And this point circle we may be using in our problem solving session. But for that you will have to be alert. I mean in which situation we will be using point circle that comes only by practice. Let us move from here for a general equation of the circle. And the general form is whatever we have learned from the previous cases I am seeing that we are expecting a term of x square See, x square plus y square equal to r square or x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square equal to r square. In both, on expansion, we will be finding a term of x square, a term of y square. So, we are expecting x square plus y square term there. A term of x we are expecting. A term of y we are expecting. So, I am writing there 2gx plus 2fy plus some constant term means without x, without y and equal to 0. This is what we are observing from our previous two things and we are trying to write now one general equation. Now, if this equation you are going to use as a standard equation, then it is better that you remember the corresponding center and radius also. Now, I am writing here center as minus g comma minus f. How do I write that? If you collect x square plus 2gx term together, you will understand that I can make there a perfect square. And that perfect square would be x plus g whole square. Correct? And similarly, y square plus 2fy term I can keep together and I can write y plus f whole square. But in the process what I am doing, I am taking actually x square plus 2gx term together. True. But then I am creating a term of g square also. And I am similarly creating a term of f square. That will have to be removed later. Means subtract. Okay. So, because of that I will be rewriting actually equation and get my center as minus g comma minus f. And minus g comma minus f, how do you remember? You remember it as minus half times coefficient of x and minus half times coefficient of y to get the center. Oh. And what about radius? Now what happens? That radius will become under root g square plus f square minus c. Why do I say so? x square plus 2gx plus g square on left hand side if you have, then g square you will be adding on the right hand side also. And similarly with f square, add on the left hand side and add on the right hand side. And that constant term you take on the right hand side. So, g square plus f square minus c will appear on the right hand side. And x plus g whole square and y plus f whole square you will be having on the left. Which will be giving you center as minus g comma minus f. And right hand side was g square plus f square minus c. So, radius becomes under root g square plus f square minus c. Correct? And then how do I remember that? Again, g you replace by 1 by 2 times coefficient of x etc. And then if you wish, you can remember that right hand side big expression. But my request to you is, you just remember it as better way is under root g square plus f square minus c. But there are students, those who prefer the right hand side also. So, I would leave that to you. Okay. Let us proceed from here by taking one example. And the example says, find the radius of the circle x square plus y square plus 4x minus 6y plus 1 equal to 0. Now see here it is given in that standard form and from here you have to find radius. Most of the time coordinate geometry questions actually get solved if you draw correct figures. And in case of circles I can say that to draw correct figure, maybe in orientation also, you should know radius and center. And if equation is given like this, which is in the general form, then finding center and finding radius should be on your tip of finger. So you must know how to make perfect squares. And to make perfect squares, one way is you keep x square plus 4x together, make their perfect square, write it as x plus 2 whole square, 
then collect y square minus 6y and then y minus 3 whole square. Those who are good at making perfect squares, they may be perhaps taking this approach. Whatever I mentioned while actually deriving that minus g and minus f. Frankly speaking, I would have done that. I would have made a perfect square and I would have proceeded. But those who are good at remembering formulae, perhaps they would try to write first g and f, etc. And then 2g equal to 4 will lead to g equal to 2. And similarly, I can go for f also. 2f equal to minus 6 would lead to f equal to minus 3. And c is 1. And straight away use formula. That would of course save your time. But if you are equally quick in making perfect square, you may take same time. The thing is, because you will be writing g, you will be writing f, you will be calculating under root g square plus f square minus c. So it takes fraction of seconds. So same fraction of second, perhaps by making perfect square also you would have used. So, but those who are happy with the formula application, for them formula must be known and then they should be able to apply that formula correctly to lead to r equal to under root 12 finally and that is nothing but your 2 root 3. So this is how we apply the formula. Oh, let us move further from here and try to get some more important notes. Whatever we have observed from previous equations. Now, what about nature of the circle we have observed? One thing is that if your g square plus f square minus c is greater than 0. Now, I am talking in terms of your standard equation or general equation. If g square plus f square minus c is greater than 0, then obviously that under root g square plus f square minus c would be a known quantity, I mean a real quantity what you can find and hence your circle would be called as a real circle. Okay. What about next? If your g square plus f square minus c is equal to 0, then will it not be a case of a point circle because your now radius is 0. I have used this word just now some time back, right? And next could be if you are saying g square plus f square minus c is less than 0. If that is less than 0, then obviously there would not be any such circle. So, we call such a circle as imaginary circle. Fine. Okay. Let us move further from here and go to some more important notes, whatever we have observed. What we observed is in the general equation, now if c is 0, that means only terms of x and y would be present there and right hand side would be 0. So, will that not tell you that x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 means the origin would satisfy equation and hence the circle would pass through the origin. Okay. What about the next one? The next one is if f is 0. If f is 0, then the 2fy term will not be there, right? And only y square term would be there, correct? So, and then x square plus 2gx part is still there. So, if you wish, you can make their perfect square as x plus g whole square, etc. So, center will have its x coordinate, but y coordinate would be 0. Y coordinate 0 means the center would be on the x axis, right? Such you know, like interpretation you should be able to make before you start problem solving. The next is if your g is 0, g is 0, or exactly on the similar logic I am saying. If g is 0, no 2gx part will be there. Only a term of x square would be there. And hence, yes, x coordinate of that center would be 0. And hence, center lies on the y axis. I hope all three points are clear to you. So, let us move further from here. And now, once for all, I take one more general equation. Rather, most general. People actually call most general, right? General is general. There is nothing called more general or most general, right? Ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. This form I am deliberately taking because we have seen similar equation in case of pair of straight lines also. And there also we had a particular condition that when does this equation actually represent a pair of straight lines? Same way here we should know when does this equation represent a circle, right? So, the condition is that first is a equal to b. Means coefficient of x square and coefficient of y square. They should be equal and not equal to 0. Obviously, because we want that term of x square and term of y square to survive. And next, what we are expecting that h should be 0. Means product x, y term, we do not want there. And one more thing is required. That was about delta. You remember what we had done in that delta? That was ABC plus 2FGH minus AF square minus BG square minus CH square. That was delta. You will have to evaluate this quantity here also. And delta should not be equal to 0 for a circle. Correct? Now, these three things we are expecting from that general equation of the circle. Here, the change of general equation from the previous one is here I am writing coefficients of x square and y square also as a and b, right? 
So this was all about the basics of equation of circle and in next term we will be taking more about equations of circle in different forms. Till then stay tuned. Thank you. Hope you have liked this video. To subscribe please click on this side or if you want to place an order for the book please click on this side. Thank you.